morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Greet your neighbor in Christ today as we say good morning and to the Lord's house. <clears throat> God is good all the time. God is good. To love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind is to reflect on God's mercy in responding to one's neighbor. That mercy found its most profound expression in the gospel that has come to you, namely, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That gospel mercy comes to us again today at the font, at the altar, and from the pulpit. It is very near to you, to all of us in this world. Uh, a note for the choir, choir rehearsal uh, for the Mission Festival will be at 6.30, uh, <clears throat> just so uh, you're aware of that. Vacation Bible School, uh, 22nd through the 25th, and um, the Mission Festival, uh, our ice cream social will be uh, held today from 11 to 1 at St. Mark's Lutheran uh, at Domersville and Nagel Roads. Is everybody going to that, the ice cream show, social? That would be very nice. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning as we gather? Let us pray. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this day and for all of your blessings for fellowship in your name. Help us, O oh Lord, to reach out to one another, no matter when, no matter where, no matter what the circumstance, to lift each other up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The gospel I have here to read says Luke 10, 25 through 37. I don't see the other one in here. Oh, here it is, Carol. It's back on the back page. <laughs> okay. 
A reading from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 9 through 14. Moses calls the people who are about to enter the promised land to renew the covenant God made with their ancestors. Through this covenant, God gives life and asks for obedience. God's commandment is neither burdensome nor too far off, but dwells in the people's own hearts. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should is it not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe the word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 25. The refrain, show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Show me To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. And you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly in your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. Show me your ways, O Lord, and Our second reading comes from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The letter to the Colossians was written to warn its readers of various false teachings. The first part of the letter is an expression of thanks for the faith, hope, and love that marked this community, including a prayer for strength and courage from Paul. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from, peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just that is, as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Can we have our kids come forward for the children's message, please? Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Has anyone ever played the game headbands before? You've seen it? Okay, this is a pretty fun game. Um, it a answers the question, what am I? So what you would do is the player would put a headband on, and then they'd put a card in here that I can't see what it is. Is this the right side up, Evie? Okay. So then I'm supposed to ask questions and you guys answer them to see if I can guess what this is. So is this an animal? Yes. Oh, um, is it an animal found in a zoo? No. Okay. Is it an animal found on a farm? No. Does it fly? Yes. Is it an insect? Yes. Does it make honey? Yes. Is it a bee? Oh, look at that. So that was good to describe what this is. So what if I would just do this? How would you guys describe what a banana is? It's a fruit. It's yellow. You can eat it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Christy likes them. That is true. Good job. It's appealing. <laughs> okay. Um, how would we describe a hot dog? You can eat it. Oh, yes, ketchup on it for sure. It's from pigs. Good one. So that is good. There's a whole bunch of things in here. Snakes, fire hydrants, pizza. And we'd have to try to think of how we could describe these items. Now, what if one of them said a neighbor? It was trying to get you to describe what a neighbor is. How would we describe a neighbor? Any thoughts? Someone close to you? Someone that's your friend? That's some pretty good descriptions because that exact question is what is a neighbor or who is my neighbor? That's what we're going to hear about in our Bible lesson because Jesus told um, the disciples and told the crowd that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And then somebody said, Okay, Jesus, but what is a neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And instead of playing the game headbands, Jesus told a story that describes who your neighbor is. And I love your answers that someone that's close to you, someone to a, who's a friend, and that's we're supposed to show our love to our neighbors. So we pray about that this morning, boys and girls. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us. Uh, help us to show your love to our neighbors to, and to all. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up and playing headbands this morning. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. 
But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you with whatever more that you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your teaching today, your words that stir us, O Lord, in our hearts and minds and soul to love you more, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Thank you, O Lord, for teaching us not our ways, but your ways, your ways of truth and justice, mercy, and compassion. Thank you, O Lord, for showing us the sides of ourselves that are uncaring, the sides of ourselves that are capricious in the face of suffering. Thank you, O Lord, for turning us around to face you, your goodness, your love, your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, some of you know my story, and I, I mentioned it when I, my sort of epiphany, I think when I first came here to, to preach. But anyway... Long story short, man dying in front of my brownstone in New York City, freezing to death. Life changed. Took him inside, bathed him, clothed him, washed him. My life changed. Didn't know it was going to change on West 47th Street, but it did. Oftentimes, um, when we hear about this parable, uh, and I think it's probably one of our favorite parables, you know, the teachings of Jesus, I think for each one of us, we, we bring our own sort of perspective to it. Uh, and um, I guess because we bring our own perspective to it, we kind of get, you know, a certain wisdom out of it that we want to get. Some of us may be that person lying half dead in a ditch and we can relate to that person who's crying out for help. Somebody help me. Somebody. Somebody help me. Maybe, maybe that part of this parable is the part that you have experienced in your life in a very real and personal fashion. And then there are other people in this story that we... Uh, also think about that might be a version of us, for example, realizing that we should do something to help, but as it were, we kind of 
walked on the other side of the street to pretend that we didn't hear or we didn't see what was going on. So we could have been the priest and we could have been the Levite. And we could also be the person to whom Jesus is speaking. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the answer is, get involved. Get involved. Get involved with the unknown invitation. Get involved. Be ready. Keep your lamp lit because one day somebody's going to be crying for help. And it might be that you are the person to bring healing and wholeness to the person in the ditch. Sometimes we have a, a feeling that, well, you know, nothing is ever really going to happen to me. I mean, I'm healthy, life is good, and, and things are going my way, and I can't even imagine that one day I would be lying there crying for help. But we know that life isn't this way. So Jesus, in this parable, wants us to experience every person and every moment of this Good Samaritan parable. Jesus wants us to be every person in it so that we can fully experience what this parable is all about. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, the reason why the priest and the Levite walked on the other side of the street, as it were, is because the man lying there and bleeding to death was untouchable. Priests didn't touch people that were bleeding. Priests and Levites didn't get involved with people who were suffering because they were unclean. You know, the ritual cleanliness laws. And that's why Jesus said, you heard what the law said. Law didn't say all that much about being, staying clean. The law told you about loving God with all your heart and your mind and your soul. But you know what? In the middle of that moment, those priests and Levites said, uh-oh, I might get my hands dirty. Now maybe that's something that we can relate to, again, as I said as well. If I get involved in, in a situation where I might get my hands dirty, my heart dirty, my head dirty, it may bring uncomfortableness to me. It's easier to walk on the other side of the street and pretend that nothing is wrong. And that's why I always say, <laughs> the gospel's bad news before it's good news. It's bad news, not bad. It's news that makes us change and transforms us and makes us new, a new creation. I'm sure you in your life, I know as in mine, we have encountered the suffering and the mercy and compassion of God in our life. And there's nothing more wonderful than a congregation like this or any group of people, uh, I don't care what religion they are, who go out and help people and make a difference and, pe and pick people up. We put too many obstacles in, in, a, in the path of goodness and mercy in our lives and in this nation and in the world when we don't have to. And so Jesus wants us to remember today 
If we love God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul, then we have to be God's people. And we have to recognize that God has created all people just like you and just like myself. And God wants us to respond the way that God would respond. Final point in this story. You know, money is important when we talk about helping people, right? And for a lot of us, we can raise our hands and say, yeah, yeah, Lord, I mean, I, I've given a lot. I've, I've given, I've, I've sent gifts, and that's, that's a good thing, but I haven't always got involved. So this Samaritan who put out a little bit of denarii also did some other things that are important in terms of human relationship and what God wants us to do. What? Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you. He stood there. He waited. He made sure that this man was going to be taken care of. He poured oil and wine on him, bandaged his wounds, and made sure that someone was going to look after him. He didn't just bandage his wounds and leave him there on the road. But he lifted him up and put him on his donkey and moved him out of town into a place of safety where he wouldn't suffer, where he could survive. So yes, God wants us to use our resources to help, but God wants us to get involved face to face and not be afraid if we're going to get our hands dirty. Not be afraid if we're going to, you know, not be as clean as we want to be. Because God wants us to have a conscience that is clear. God wants us to have a soul and a heart that is not restless, but rests in that love and grace, unconditional love of God. Who's your neighbor? You know who your neighbor is. Like the kid said, could be a close one, someone who lives next door, could be somebody you know. Could be an outsider, like a Samaritan who taught us and teaches us today as an outsider what the compassion and love and mercy of God really is. Let us pray. Lord, you invite us to go and do likewise to extend your mercy and blessings. Help us, O oh Lord, to teach our children what it means to be merciful and kind and generous. Help us to find models in our education system and in our nation and around the world that teaches people what it means to be human, what it means to cry out for help, what it means to soothe wounds and bind up broken bodies. Teach us your ways, Lord. That's what we said today. That's what David said in the psalm. Teach us your ways. So open our hearts. Open our minds. Not to the world's wisdom, but to yours, Lord. Your ways are not our ways. Your wisdom is not our wisdom. Your mercy is not our mercy but they are gifts for us to use, tools to transform as we are able 
in our broken natures. Thank you, O oh Lord, for this Samaritan. We don't know what his name was, whether it was Bob or Frank or Joshua or Abraham. And we don't know, Lord, the name of that man half dead in the street. But you know. You know the names, Lord. You have called us from our mother's wombs. You have set us aside. You have called us by name. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be your people in every time and in every place and every generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join hands with your neighbor as we pray this morning. Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. 
for the church, steadfast and faithful in its mission to proclaim redemption through Jesus Christ for all ministers of the gospel who proclaim that the word is near, let us pray. For areas affected by drought or storms, especially today, we pray for those people in Louisiana, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, for livestock and fields, for ranchers and farmers, and for all stewards of, of the earth, that as God's goodness is revealed in creation, we act with justice toward all creatures. Amen. Let us pray. Have mercy, God. For lawyers and advocates, for local, regional, and national governments, and for peace throughout the world, that God send gracious and upright leaders to govern with mercy and with truth. Let us pray. Have for those who feel ashamed, for those who find it difficult to trust, for the bereaved and sick. We pray especially today for Dave and Leona and Florence, Lorna, Marlene, Tricia, Marv, Jean, Lauren, Carol, and those we name silent or spoken. We lift up our prayers, family and friends, Tamika, Macy, Ron, Roger, PK, Steve, Brady, Marion, Ann, Hal, Nick, Renee, Delia, Jane, Dawn, Adam, Larry, Rick, Thayer, the family of Emily Jackson, Rob. That people, that God provide compassionate and loving caregivers to all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the members of the body of Christ, in this place, in this congregation, for those who do good works in our midst, for those who are visiting and those who are absent, that the Holy Spirit guide all the journeys of our lives, let us pray. Amen. For our ancestors who have inspired us by their lives of faith, that thankful for their witness, we can confidently proclaim our salvation, let us pray. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all of our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share, let us share Christ's peace. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace. Christy, how you doing? Good Peace about you. Good. Peace be with you. Peace. When you're not feeling good, what's wrong? Oh, just an upset stomach. All right, I'll you feel better. Yeah, I will. Okay, you sure? Yeah, Okay, good. Good, good. Hey, good morning. Peace be with you anyway. Peace be with you. That's it. Good morning. Good morning. Danny, peace be with you. 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 Hey, peace be with you. How's your mom doing? How's your, how's your mom doing? I don't get to see her. Still doesn't hear very well. Yeah, really? We're trying to get her help. It's a long drawn out process. Oh, is that okay? All right. Be careful. Gentlemen? Hey, peace be with you. Hi, peace be with you. Peace.
quickly tries. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts now toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> and again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God come and be fed in Jesus Christ in bread and wine. All is ready. All are welcome.
give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God from above. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.